Okay, time to solve some more inequalities. So for today's lesson, we're going to be building on what we've been doing, which feels like that's what we've been doing the last few days, just building and building and building. So today, uh, the goal is to solve two-step inequalities, in inequalities that involve more than one step. All of the steps we've done so far have just been one inverse operation. Now it's going to have more than one. Um, and we're going to use exactly what we know about solving two-step equations to help us solve two-step inequalities. And I'm going to model this through three example problems, which you can then apply to today's practice. So um, the first one we're going to look at is the inequality 5x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 11. So when there's more than one step involved, since we're using inverse operations, we're going to go backwards through our typical order of operations. So instead of going PEMDAS, we're going to go backwards. So we're going to look, is there any addition or subtraction, and take care of that first. And that would mean I need to add 4 to both sides of the inequality. That's going to leave 5x, and that's going to leave 15. And then my last step here is going to be to undo that multiplication through division. And my final uh, answer here is that x in this inequality can be any value that is greater than or equal to positive 3. Um, we could test that out. We could take 3 itself, since x can be equal to 3 and plug it in. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 minus 4 is 11, and that satisfies the equal to part of the inequality. We could then pick a value that's greater than 3. So x could be 4. 5 times 4 is 20. 20 minus 4 is 16, which is greater than 11, and that still satisfies the inequality. So this is our solution set, any value greater than or equal to 3. And I'm going to model this on a graph because it asks us to do that as well. So to graph it, set up the number line, and we're going to have an open circle here, excuse me, a closed circle here, because it can be equal to 3, and since it's all the values that are greater than 3 as well, it's going to be an arrow pointing towards the right. Okay, let's do another example. For our next one, we're going to have b divided by negative 3 plus 4 is less than 13. So I'm going to go backwards through my typical order of operations, which means I'm going to be subtracting 4 to undo that adding 4. It would help if I wrote the correct thing down. And that's going to leave b divided by a negative 3 is less than 9. Um, and at this point, my last step is to undo divide by negative 3. And to undo that, I'm going to multiply by negative 3. That's going to get rid of this here. And that's going to leave b. And on the other side, since I'm multiplying by negative 3, it leaves negative 27. Now, I hope that some of you are thinking of yesterday's lesson, when you multiply or divide by a negative number, I am multiplying by negative 3, by negative 3. That means I have to flip my inequality sign to keep the uh, statement true. So I'm going to flip, and now it's b is any value that is greater than negative 27. So negative 26, negative 25, 0, 100, 1,000, positive 4. Any number that's greater than negative 27 will make this inequality true. Um, if you wanted, you could test that theory out. Use a nice easy number like 0. 0 divided by negative 3 is 0, plus 4 is 4, and that's less than 13. You could use the number positive 3. 3 divided by negative 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 plus 4 is negative 3. All of these numbers that I'm saying are going to work out. Um, and so let's graph our solution set. It's going to be anything greater than negative 27. So 
So this is what my graph looks like. It, it's an open circle because we're not including negative 27 in the solution set. So don't have a closed circle. It's got to be open for this one. And there you go. Um, the last one we're going to look at today is a word problem. It's always good to look at at least one word problem example. And for this one, we're talking about a football team that ordered sweatshirts for the players on the team. And when they ordered, the price per sweatshirt decreased by five cents for each sweatshirt that you order. So the more that you order, the bigger discount you get on the price of the sweatshirts. Um, so the question is, how many sweatshirts should the team order for the price per sweatshirt to be no greater than $32.50? Sometimes the word problems can seem a little funky. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write out a verbal model of what the inequality is going to look like. I'm going to write it out in words and then we'll take it from there. Okay, <clears throat> we're back now. I have written out the word problem um, using just a, a simple verbal description of what's happening. One thing I had forgotten that I've put on the screen now is to give you what the cost of a sweatshirt would have been just straight up. So if you're just buying one sweatshirt, it would have been $40, as you can see on the red price tag here. Um, so what this problem is saying is you take the base price and then since we're going to get a discount, we're going to subtract, that's why I have a subtraction sign, we're gonna subtract this. The price decrease by the number of sweatshirts ordered. Remember it says we have a decrease of five cents per sweatshirt. And the big uh, thing to pay attention to here is the price per sweatshirt, we want it to be no greater than. So I need to consider what inequality symbol fits no greater than? Well, it's got to be less than or equal to. It just can't be greater than. So it needs to be less than or equal to. So I want this to be less than or equal to my desired price, my target price. Now let's start filling in some numbers here. The sweatshirt base price is $40 and the price decrease is five cents multiplied by, I'm gonna use um, N for number of sweatshirts. We don't know how many sweatshirts we're gonna order. Uh, and it needs to be less than or equal to our target price, our desired price. We don't wanna spend more than 32.50 per sweatshirt. So let me just clean this up, write it a little bit nicer. Here's our inequality. And now we can solve this inequality. So to solve this, um, the first thing that I'm going to do is, and pay attention closely here, I'm going to subtract 40. Why? Because how do you get rid of positive 40? 40 minus 40 is 0. That gets rid of it. Um, and then I need to subtract 40 from this side as well. And remember to line up your place values uh, because we're working with um, decimals on the on the right hand side so I need to make sure things are lined up and now what's left over is minus 0.5 n so negative 0 0.05 n is less than or equal to and then when you subtract $32.50 minus 40 that's gonna leave you with a negative so negative 750 um, and now, from here, my last step is going to be to divide by negative 0.05. So that's going to eliminate it on this side. And I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Um, one thing I'm noticing is that I'm dividing by a negative, which means that my inequality symbol is going to flip. I'm dividing by negative 0.05. So I have to flip my symbol to become greater than or equal to instead of less than or equal to. And then negative 7.5 divided by negative 0.05 is 150. Ooh, so let's take this and go back to the original problem and see if what we've found makes sense. The ultimate question was, how many sweatshirts does the team need to order 
so that they have a price per sweatshirt that's not greater than $32.50. As long as they order 150 sweatshirts or more, they will have um, a price per sweatshirt that is $32.50 or less. It won't be bigger than that. So as long as they hit 150, they'll be at $32.50. And anything over 150 sweatshirts, the price will keep going down by 50 cents per sweatshirt. So um, this was a little bit involved, but you can do something like this. Take the time to set up your uh, word phrase version of the problem, plug in what you know, and then you're off to the races. Just take your time solving it. Um, so today for practice, it's going to be some two-step inequalities with a couple word problems. There are nine problems uh, in total. Um, take your time, show your work, really take the time to show your work. It helps to see the steps and to um, help you think through the problem, more importantly, and um, ask questions and all that jazz and have a great time doing math. Bye-bye.